Hello there, Mark Houlihan here for Speedway Motors. We are at the 2022 SEMA show in the Willwood Disc Brakes booth with my good friend Mike Hamrick, and we're here today to talk about a lot of the brake questions that we get from our customers. Now, Mike, one of the most important questions that we get from our customers is on adjustable proportioning valves. Do they need one? What does it do? And how do I adjust it? It is a very good question. And in most cases, we explain to the customer to plumb one in line to the rear brakes if it's going to be on their hot rod or muscle car application used on the street. So a lot of people have a misconception that a proportioning valve is taking pressure from one set of brakes and giving it to another set of brakes, meaning maybe taking the pressure or the volume from the rears and putting it to the front. That's actually false. Okay. The person driving the car is doing that. So the way that the valve works is, when you're looking at our unit, when it's screwed all the way in, it's as though it's not reducing anything. It's not even there. Not even in the picture. Not even there. It's not doing anything, okay? Then when we've got a brake system where it's on a street car, and let's say that you're doing some test panic stops and the rear end locks up. Well, what's happening is we've got too much rear brake in the car. And obviously you don't want that because then the rear end wants to come around and meet the front end. Absolutely. Yeah. So on street cars, typically we've got it plumbed to the rear brake. Mm -hmm. Now, what's funny is sometimes you might not even need the proportioning valve, but for the time and money on purchasing one and installing it when you're building your vehicle, it, it's there's no cost yeah. prohibited. You want to do that because you may have to down the road change it. Yeah, I mean, even just your brake pad compound, you get a more aggressive compound, you might now have too much rear brake. Exactly. Yeah. So the way that this works is, let's say that we're going 45 miles an hour and we depress the brake pedal as though a child ran out in front of us and the rear end locks up. Well, what we do is we'll screw the valve out. And what that's gonna do when it's plumbed to the rear brake is, it's going to take the rear brake out of the car. Well, as the rear end doesn't lock up now, what does the human being do? Steps harder on the pedal. And that gives you more front brake. More front brake. brake, okay. So the pressure isn't going from one to the other, it's actually the person operating the vehicle now doesn't have any brakes locking up so they can depress the pedal harder and use more of the front brake. Because obviously, obviously the first thing that someone's going to intuitively do is the rear start to lock up, they're going to ease off the pedal. Exactly. Yeah. So that's what this does. Now, why do we make an adjustable one? It's because when you're building your hot rod or muscle car, you have no idea. Too many variables. Way too many. Suspension, yeah. tire, weight of the vehicle, what you're doing with the vehicle, tire size and diameter. So this ha allows you to adjust it to the preference of what you're doing with a vehicle and who's driving it. Perfect, well now we know a little bit more about how an adjustable proportioning valve works and why you need one for your car. Thanks for watching.